Ja, hej och välkomna till Texas Instruments som montar här. Texas Instruments tillverkar cpu och processorer till mobila enheter och här har vi något som spelar som OMAP5, nästa generations ARM Cortex A15 arkitektur. Och jag har Mark Granger med mig här som ska gå igenom lite vad det här handlar om. Please Mark, can you tell us a bit more about the OMAP5 platform? All right, well I can tell you we're very excited at Texas Instruments about this. So it's our first uh, 28 nanometer application processor and as well it's the First with the ARM Cortex A15, which is the latest and greatest architecture uh, from ARM, and uh, we're here today demoing this, uh, you know, at the Mobile World Congress, showing some of the huge capabilities of our OMAP 5430 and its smart multi-core advantage. So, if we take a look at the uh, demo, what you'll see right now is uh, an SPB uh, custom 3D UI. And you'll notice how smooth it was when it was going around. When it was going around, that's partly due to the power of our 3D graphics engine, which is a SGX 544 MP2 uh, dual core from Imagination. And as well, in this architecture, we have a unique composition engine, which further can offload that 544 and blend all these multiple layers very efficiently and you know up to you know 10x lower uh, power consumption or uh, for doing the same task in the composition engine versus if you had to do it in the 544 so it's going to enable really you know high resolution very fluid uis uh, to the user if you if you're comparing this GPU to current generations that mm -hmm. we see in the OMAP 4400 series, for example, right. how are we? Could we make some? Uh, how much more performance can we expect from the GPU in the OMAP 5? Right. So, uh, what, you know, we went uh, from the OMAP 4430 with the SGX 540 core to a OMAP 4470, which it got roughly 2x the performance, and then this you'll get a another two to three x boost. Uh, in graphics performance. So a huge uh, boost in, yeah. in graphics performance. And so now one interesting thing to note that we've been showing here at the show is the comparison of our OMAP5 smart multi-core architecture versus a commercially available quad-core A9. And what you'll see is we're running the Embassy uh, page load benchmark, downloading 20 uh, you know, rich uh, web pages, and it's you know, monitoring how long it takes to do that. And by the way, we're downloading a 500 megabyte file in parallel and playing MP3 on both of these. So what you'll notice here is that this is going to complete in 95 seconds, the OMAP5 Smart Multi-Core, and the the Cortex A9 Quad Core will be about 201 seconds. And what you're highlighting there is the fundamental advantage of one, the Cortex A15, it's a much higher instruction set efficiency, so you can get more work done more quickly, and also related to the multi-threaded nature of the web browsers. So the, the browsers have uh, multiple threads, as you, as you know, but they're highly dependent on a few threads. And what you'll see is you don't get as much acceleration when you go to three to four cores, and, and therefore it, it's running behind. And by the way, just for your reference, this uh, these ARM processors here are only running at 800 megahertz versus the, the Quad A9 running at 1.3. Three. So uh, a very impressive uh, performance boost, and you know we'll be shipping this product at 1.7 and 2.0 gigahertz uh, in the marketplace. Can can you tell us a bit, uh, if we're trying to compare the performance differences in other usage uh, scenarios? Uh, how would this compare? Is this a very specific case where the OMA 5 is very powerful, or is this like a general performance difference compared to the A9 uh, quad cores? Uh, well, we, we we do believe that our smart multi-core architecture is the right way to go, uh, maximizing performance and or minimizing power consumption. Because today in the market, the the thing that we all care about is uh, the thermal limit 
because you certainly don't want your phone to get too hot, right? True. So when we bring all this massive performance, we need to make sure we do it in the thermal uh, budget. And so what you'll see is by distributing across the, the, the dual Cortex A15s, uh, the dual Cortex M4s. So these, these M4s are some very power efficient cores and they're naturally adept at real-time processing. So we allow them to uh, control the image processing, the video processing. And so, for instance, in a video playback mode, you'll have the video accelerator uh, working, being monitored and controlled by the M4, and allowing these A15s to be asleep most of the time. So really minimizing the power while uh, uh, you know bringing a great experience. By the way, I, I may not have mentioned, but you know the IVA HD in the 5430 is a 1080p 60 uh, machine. So a doubling of video performance versus the, the OMAP 4. And it brings also some interesting use cases. For instance, we could shoot 720p, 120 frames per second. So like you can then, after you've shot that, that video of uh, your child playing a sport or whatnot, you can play it back, slow down to, for instance, 24 FPS, and get a slow-mo effect to, to see the goal in the net or whatever it may be. So, uh, Is that a specific feature that you will be uh, focusing on, uh, like uh, different uh, shooting modes for the cameras? And stuff? A absolutely, you'll see that being pushed out into the market. Um, you may have seen, for instance, the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, uh, the ice cream sandwich GED. We did a lot of very interesting things, zero shutter lag, panoramic picture. You're going to see the next uh, the next level of that with, uh, uh, you know, with OMAP 5. Perfect. So. Uh, we talked about that uh, this uh, CPU cores uh, in that platform is running at lower megahertz than the quad-core ARM A9. Uh, if we compare at the same clock frequency, a dual core to a dual core, what are we talking about in performance increase per core uh, with the A15 compared uh, to A9? So at, at the same uh, frequency, um, same thing, it's uh, roughly a, a 50% uh, boost in in uh, different performance points. So then you get the scaling with the, the frequency as yeah. well. So Perfect. it's a it's a great uh, yeah. boost. Uh, quad cores, uh, do you have that on, uh, I guess you have it on roadmaps, but do you have it on public roadmaps when you switch over to using four cores as well? So, so fundamentally, what you'll see from TI is this smart multi-core. And uh, you know we don't really focus on the number of cores, we focus on delivering the right user experience. And we believe by having all of these distributed processing blocks and targeting the right tasks of the right core, will deliver the best user experience of any of the solutions out there. And at the end of the day, that's what the consumer is going to want. Uh, last thing, power efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, comparing, for example, you said you were going to ship these uh, at dual core at 1.5 to 2.0 gigahertz. Yeah, 1.7 to 2.0. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you compare to uh, today's uh, OMAP uh, 4400 series mm -hmm. uh, with the dual core CPU in the same clock frequency, how are we going to see the power efficiency by the new 28 nanometer technology? Will there be improvements, or will the performance be so high so that it's about the same level? So so, so for instance, uh, when you do a, a page uh, download, you know, web browsing uh, use case on the OMAP 5 versus the OMAP 4, you'll actually see a 40% reduction in power uh, versus the OMAP 4. And that's due to a few things. One, uh, this is 28 nanometers, so a smaller process uh, geometry. But two, it's also the efficiency of the A15. So since you get all those tasks done quicker, you go to sleep uh, quicker. And three, it's due to something we call our Smart Reflex 3. It's uh, our third generation of uh, power management techniques, such as adaptive voltage scaling, but applying that further to the CPU cores to get uh, you know very fast in and out of uh, a very low power state. And ultimately saving the most uh, power consumption. Okay, cool. So the big question, when will we see these in products? So, so we may see some lead partners by the end of the year, but yeah. very solidly, 1Q13 will have products uh, in the market. Okay, so. perfect. Thank you, Mark. All right, thank you.
Thank you.